No pod, no brindle, no structure. All right, so if you're new to breeding, you've been seeing no pied, no brindle. You've been wondering what it's about. You probably did a little bit of research. You found out that pied and brindle, they're just a coat pattern. It's not a genetic disease. It's not a deformity. It's nothing like that that you need to run from. It's not something that gets carried and produces birth defects. It's just a coat pattern, two different coat patterns. One of those is dominant and one of those is recessive. Watch all the way to the end, find out which one is the dominant one. That's the one you gotta worry more about if you are a colored breeder and you are worried about producing those coat patterns. Let me try to paint a picture for you guys. If you go and you randomly pick out 10 colored dogs, lilacs, blues, chocolates, whatever, merles, whatever, and then go pick out 10 pied and brindle dogs, just randomly grab the first 10. You compare them to each other, I can guarantee you more of those pied and brindle dogs are going to have more of a bulldog structure. They're going to have more of a small, thick, compact bulldog structure. Pied, pied and brindle are some of the original French bulldog colors. So it's going to be more true to that bulldog gene. It's going to be more true to that bulldog structure type. I'm not saying that all colored dogs aren't going to look good, that all colored dogs are skinny. No. You can get a good structured, a well-structured, thick, short, compact, structured colored dog. What I'm telling you is it's a lot fewer and far between because it's harder to accomplish because you're breeding out the pied and brindle which carries so much of that compact, short, thick bulldog structure. If you're into producing real bulldogs with a bulldog look, there's no reason you should be running from pied or brindle. It's okay. I and mean, what are you worried about? You're worried that no one's gonna buy your dogs? Because pet people love pied and brindles. They have no problem buying pied and brindle dogs. It's a really good looking coat pattern. Um, a reverse brindle, a reverse blue lilac brindle is one of my favorite colors in French bulldogs or any dog. Nothing to worry about. Pet owners are still gonna be buying them. And I mean, if we're talking about you're a new breeder, that's why you don't understand what pied and brindle is. You're a new breeder, like, do you really think you're going to be selling dogs to other breeders? Why would another breeder buy a dog off you who just started breeding? You're going to be selling pets. You're going to be selling dogs to your friends and family. And believe me, they're going to love that pied and brindle Like dog. I was saying, the coat patterns of pied and brindle dogs are beautiful. The brindle is a stripe pattern, like a tiger stripe pattern, with a lighter color underneath. And then you have what's called a reverse brindle, where that lighter color is going to be more prominent. And then a pied dog is a dog that is more than 50% white. More than 50% covered in white is pied. Um, so you get that cow look. Some, pat some patterns aren't that pleasing looking, but some of them are really cool looking. You know, a lot of the split face pied patterns or just a lot of the, you know, maybe it's all white but then a blue head or, or something like that. There's some really cool pied patterns. And again, let's not forget, the pied and the brindle come with the good extreme bulldog structure. And here's another thing. So since everyone's been on this no pied, no brindle kick for so long, like I've said, they've lost a lot of their structure in their dogs. So people are going back to um, thick, short, compact, well-structured dogs. People are going back to breeding towards those style studs to get the structure back because it's been lost. So that is something that can set you apart by by gaining your structure, which is what you always should be doing in your breeding program. It should always be structure over color. Again, since they've been breeding out the pied and brindles, you don't see any of the pied patterns anymore. So since you don't see them anymore, it's kind of refreshing when you do see them. It makes them unique again. It makes them rare because no one's been breeding them. So I'm actually looking to produce a pied litter this year. I haven't seen the pied pattern in so long and made me want to see the pied again. So I want to produce some pieds. And like I said, I have no problem selling to high-end pet homes. The pet people love the pied pattern. They're not going to run from it. They're not scared. There's, there's nothing wrong with pied or brindle. Pied or brindle does not come with any genetic defects, nothing like that. Um, that's actually a text I got this morning which made me kick off this video. Um, somebody asking me, if pied and brindle had to do with birth defects in puppies. No! I couldn't believe the misinformation that is out here on pied and brindle dogs, so I felt like I had to shoot this video for you guys. So if it helped you, please let me know. Hit that like button, drop a comment below. Videos. That's what inspires me to keep making these videos. And it's, it's very time consuming editing this and doing this, but hearing from you guys that I make you a better breeder or how I helped you out or how I saved your puppies, 
that's what does it for me. So I really appreciate all the comments and all the feedback you guys could leave. Miss, you're going to have to wait to the end of this video. I'm going to tell you the biggest myth at the end. So make sure you guys don't click out, don't scroll out, keep listening, stay right here with me. My boy Magilla, right here, he carries one copy pied. He's a lilac, but he carries a pied carrier. So if you can see, he's got a pretty extreme structure. Um, and that is why. He was the only pup in the litter that carried pied, and he was the only pup in the litter with this type of pup. If you a really good quality pied female, and you're looking to breed her, pied is a recessive gene. Pied is not a dominant gene. Pied is a recessive gene. So you can, if you have a non-pied, no-pied, no-brindle female, and you find a stud that you like, and that stud happens to carry pied, you're fine. If you're really trying to not produce pied pups, you're really scared about producing pied pups, you're fine. You can breed to that stud and you won't get any pied dogs. You will get some carriers, possibly. You might not get any carriers. Statistically, you'll get about half of your litter will be pied carriers. They won't be visual pieds. So if you really are trying to run from the pied coat pattern, don't X out a stud just because they carry pied. As long as your female doesn't carry, you're good. It is a recessive gene, meaning both parents, both dogs need to carry at least one copy of the pied to produce a visual pied. If you haven't already, make sure you're following me on all my social media. Big Bone Bulldogs on TikTok, my backup TikTok, The Bulldog Breeder. Big Bone Bulldogs on Instagram, my main IG is down right now, so my backup IG, Big Bone Bulldogs underscore DB. And of course, always BigBoneBulldogs.com, or you can direct email me, BigBoneBulldogs. I ordered this beautiful blue Brindo Cane Corso you see over my shoulder right here. She's an Italian Mastiff. I imported her from Serbia. She's a Brindle. She's a beautiful blue Brindle. Like I said earlier, one of my favorite coat With patterns. the Brindle, is it seems to be a little different in different breeds. In the Corsos and in the Bulldogs, English Bulldogs, you could breed to a brindle dog and a lot of times really not get any brindles. Where with the French Bulldogs, brindle is a dominant, brindle's a dominant gene in all dogs. But brindle is a dominant gene. So, and in the French Bulldogs, it seems to be even more dominant. Um, in the French Bulldogs, if you breed to a brindle dog, you probably are gonna get a few brindle pups, regardless if you have a non-carrier or not. That's the difference between it being a dominant gene and not a recessive gene. So a dominant gene only needs one copy to be visual. So if you breed to a brindle, visual brindle, or a brindle carrier, you can get visual brindle pups. And with French Bulldogs, a lot of times you do. But again, not a big deal. The brindle pattern is absolutely beautiful. If there's any other questions you guys got with coat, color, um, DNA, Please refer to some of my previous videos. I've already dropped a few videos on um, coat, color, and genes, DNA, reading DNA, how to read DNA. If there's anything I haven't answered already, feel free to leave it in the comments and let me know what you want to that see was next. The first thing I did, I already dropped a video showing you how I did this, all the work that went into doing this. There's a lot more to it than just laying out artificial turf. So go ahead and watch my Welcome to the Bulldog Farm video. Check it out. kitchen in over here. I have hot water to clean the uh, doggy bowls. I'm doing 10 stalls, all poured concrete walls. I got not one, but two, two ton AC units. I live in central Florida. It gets super hot. Just in case one AC unit fails, another one will still be to keep my dogs alive. I did spray insulation to hold the cool air in here as long as possible in case anything ever did go wrong. Three inches of closed cell foam spray to R20 factor. I have doggy doors going outside. They all have 10 foot runs outside. These are self-draining stalls that will allow everything to drain out and go outside into my septic. Over here I'll have a puppy whelping area and over here I'll have my lab. The entire property is fenced in.
Back here, like I said, 10 foot runs for all the dogs. They all have water access out here. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with all this yet. More rocks, pavers, concrete, not too sure yet. Like I said, I had a septic system put in, so that drain comes out. We did a homemade septic right here with a huge drain field. Hot water for the washer and dryer so I can wash all the puppies and dog linens and towels. You don't wanna wash that crap inside your house, that's disgusting. I had all this concrete here poured all the way around here. Welcome to the Bulldog Farm.